criticized the wealthy family for posing as benevolent philanthropists while distributing a drug that helped cause the opioid crisis. A lawsuit against Purdue Pharma has thrown back the curtain on the Sacklers, one of America's wealthiest families. Their company produced OxyContin and subsequently covered up the drug's addictive qualities, according to the suit. Until recently, the Sacklers have been known for their philanthropy more than their business. But that is changing, as Samantha B. pointed out in a withering segment of Full Frontal on Wednesday. She blasted the Sacklers for their displays of wealth and somehow slipped in a nonsensical but still funny reference to Post Malone, the heavily tattooed rapper. The Sacklers aren't just rich, they are. They have wings named after them at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Louvre, an entire museum at Harvard, a center at the Guggenheim and, if the deal goes through, Post Malone will soon be called the Sackler Post Malone. Horrifying and yet somehow an improvement. One of their children likes to grow herbs as a self-taught student of traditional medicines. Ha, traditional medicines. What a great hobby for the 40,000 children in foster care because of their parents' opioid addiction. Maybe they wouldn't be in this predicament if they just crushed up a wholesome yarrow root for mommy's headache. Ah, late night hosts have been having fun all week with the recently surfaced allegation that President Trump asked Michael Cohen, his former lawyer, to threaten schools Trump had attended to prevent them from releasing his transcripts. On Wednesday, Jimmy Kimmel and James Corden each piled on with more jokes about it. In 2011, Trump challenged President Obama to release his high school records, and then days later someone called Trump's high school and demanded they find and bury Trump's transcripts. So I would bet that Trump's grades were so bad he couldn't even get into Trump University. Including the hush money payment he made to a porn star, this makes two attempts by Trump to hide his secret Fs. Stephen Colbert is eager to know what went on behind closed doors on Capitol Hill on Wednesday, when Cohen made what was expected to be his last visit to testify before lawmakers. This morning, Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, returned to Capitol Hill for private testimony to the House Intelligence Panel. One thing that might have come up were the checks that Trump wrote to reimburse Cohen for paying off porn star Stormy Daniels. It's an accounting method known in the payroll industry as a crime. A new study reveals that sales of potato chips, cookies and ice cream have increased in states that have legalized recreational marijuana. I mean, is this a shock? Are we surprised by this? I mean, the real takeaway from this study is that scientists have officially run out of actual things to research. But one snack maker has already jumped on this study, which explains their newest product, chocolate mint barbecue cool ranch ice cream cookies. Today is Ash Wednesday, it's the first day of Lent. And with all the terrible things going on right now, this year for Lent I'm not giving up anything. I'm just giving up, in general. Amy Hoggart, the resident expert on all things British at Full Frontal, gave viewers a crash course on the history of Britain's exit from the European Union, known as Brexit. The Jonas Brothers walked James Corden through the potential side effects that may kick in if you start a band with your siblings. Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey, who is running for president in 2020, will sit down with Stephen Colbert on Thursday. At the Armory Show in Manhattan, you can glimpse the future of visual art. Here are a few highlights, courtesy of our critic, plus, ideas for what to watch tonight. The 50 Best Movies on Netflix Right Now The 25 Best Films of the 21st Century The Best Movies on Amazon Prime Video Right Now